Hi everyone! So I had a comment last week which went something like, why are all your piggies always having bladder stone issues? You seriously need to check what you're giving them. Now this came across quite harsh, like I'm messing up and making my piggies sick, but then I figured that a lot of people might be wondering why two of my four piggies were and are all of a sudden suffering with bladder stones. Am I doing something wrong? And what advice can I give you that might prevent this happening to your piggies? We've had what seems like endless vet visits, two surgeries, and along the way I've done a mountain of research. So whilst the piggies entertain us, let's talk about those dreaded bladder stones, which are unfortunately very common in our much-loved guinea pigs. Good question, Phoebe. So I remember being told by my vet to think of a guinea pig bladder a bit like a snow globe. You have liquid, the pee, and then floating around in the pee, you get these tiny, tiny crystals of calcium. The calcium is there because that's how guinea pigs naturally get rid of any they don't need. You might notice it as a white powdery substance dotted around the cage, which is normal. But stones are not normal, and they are created when calcium crystals group together and form a solid mass, either inside the bladder, sometimes the kidneys, or the connecting tubes. Stones can take months or sometimes just weeks to form. You can also get something called bladder sludge, which is where the calcium builds up but doesn't quite form a proper stone, instead just a nasty thick paste inside the bladder. Once a stone has formed, it can do one of two things. Firstly, a small stone might just sit there and not cause any problems. Or you can have a troublesome stone, which grows in size and knocks around, damaging the delicate lining of the bladder, making it inflamed and sometimes causing infections. A stone like this will be painful for your piggy when they pee or poop, so you might see them squeaking and hunching up when they go to the toilet and see blood in their urine. These may also be symptoms of cystic status and sludge, but we'll focus on stones for now. A piggy with a troublesome stone will start to lose weight and their condition will deteriorate over time. So if you suspect something is wrong, a vet visit is needed. The vets will normally do an x-ray or an ultrasound to diagnose bladder stones. The bad news is that bladder stones cannot be dissolved by any reliable method, so if they are causing problems, they need out. Sometimes female piggies will be able to pass a bladder stone naturally. Males, however, are unlikely to be able to do that because their urethra, the tube they pee from, is longer and narrower. This means males are also at a higher risk of a stone moving into the urethra and completely blocking it, which can be fatal. Smaller stones and sludge might be cleared at the vets by flushing the bladder using a catheter, but normally the only cure for large painful stones is bladder surgery, which is what Phoebe and then Roxy had, with sadly very different outcomes. But why both of them at roughly the same time? Well, there are lots of factors that affect the likelihood of getting bladder stones. Thinking back to that little bladder snow globe of crystals, if there's more crystals or less water, or the crystals get shaken up less, they are more likely to float down and bind together. So the chance of stones is higher if our piggies have a high calcium diet, if they don't drink a lot, and if they don't move around much. Other risk factors include age, genetics, and other health problems such as arthritis and persistent infections. That said, we really don't fully understand the relative importance of these, and it probably varies a lot from one guinea pig to the next. Some are just unlucky and prone to getting stones no matter what. However, there are still several things us owners can do to help prevent stones, and considering how common they are, I recommend doing some or all of these things regardless, because they are also good for our piggies' general health. And first up is drinking water. Give them well-placed water bottles and a water bowl so they have a choice of where to drink from, and get extra water into them by wetting down their veggies and forages. Also, if you have hard water, water that's high in calcium and other minerals, try using filtered or bottled water instead. High calcium content in water is thought to be one of the main sources of excess calcium in their diet, so it's really recommended to lower it, otherwise all that extra hydration isn't doing a whole lot of good. You can actually buy calcium testing strips for a couple of quid on Amazon to see how effective filtered or switching to bottled water is. 
Next up, a super common mistake is to overfeed pellets. I used to do this up until last year even. As a dry food, pellets have more concentrated calcium and the ones based on alfalfa hay should be avoided. So if you choose to feed pellets at all, a tablespoon per pig per day is fine and you'll find your pellets last a lot longer too. As long as you're feeding unlimited hay and a good range of fresh food, you don't need to worry about them missing out on vitamins, including vitamin C. On to fresh food next, and some of you might be thinking, when is she going to mention the calcium to phosphorus ratio? Well, you're ahead of the game. <laughs> it's true that calcium absorption is linked to phosphorus, and all foods have a calcium to phosphorus ratio. The ideal ratio for guinea pigs is somewhere in the region of 1.3 to 1. But what does that actually mean for us? Well, there are certain high calcium and high oxalate foods which should be fed sparingly. Examples are spinach, pie, parsley, watercress, kale, spring greens, rocket and dandelions. Other things like peppers, cucumber, coriander, fennel, tomatoes and lettuces are all on the lower end of the scale and can be fed more often. But try and keep it varied, everything in moderation. Also, one of the things I do now with Phoebe in mind is to spread the fresh food out throughout the day. And we always start the day off with some juicy cucumber, which I'd recommend for any piggies with known bladder stones or sludge issues. So what about hay? Well, calcium content varies between different grasses and even the age of the grass before it was cut for hay. In general, Timothy hay is recommended as a high fibre and low calcium option, but the best way is to feed a variety, which is why I like to give meadow hay alongside Timothy. We're also going to be trying some ryegrass hay with Phoebe as it's supposed to be good for putting on weight and is still low in calcium. You might have heard of alfalfa or lucerne hay having a high calcium content, which is correct. So avoid alfalfa hay and treats containing high amounts of it. It used to be recommended that young piggies have alfalfa, but that's kind of outdated advice now. Many agree that they will get enough calcium and protein from a healthy, varied adult diet. Next up, there are some urinary supplements available that could help, although in general there's not much evidence to prove they work. The most supported one is glucosamine, which doesn't prevent stones, but it does help the bladder form a healthy inner coating. Oxbow urinary tablets contain glucosamine, or some recommend giving half a capsule daily of cat glucosamine, such as Cystophan or Cystese. And to shake up that bladder snow globe, try up the amount of exercise your furry potatoes get, which I know can be a challenge since they love nothing better than lazing around. As well as having a big cage, small things like switching things up in the cage more often and aiming to do a little bit of free roam time every day can help get them moving more. And lastly, don't neglect regular cage cleaning. A clean cage means piggies are less likely to catch urinary tract infections caused by sitting on dirty beds. And as for our Phoebe, we are seeing the vets again next week, but through extra hydration and massaging and expressing her bladder, we have managed to pass some small stones and gritty sludge, so I'm really hoping there's no big stones in there. I'm hoping that perhaps she can get a bladder flush to help clean out her bladder. But as always everyone, thank you so much for your support and I hope you've learned something new in this video. Let us know in the comments if you did and also if you have any of your own bladder pig experiences to share. That's all for now everyone, bye bye!